Welcome back to Frank's Model Aviation Workshop. This is episode 23 in the Carl Goldberg Ultimate 10-300 Biplane Build Series. This episode we're going to continue on with the finishing of the aircraft to prepare for covering. I uh, did a few things off camera that I'll show you. It's to help with CG and stuff like that. And I'll bring you around and show you what I did. But I'm hoping to get all the filling done and uh, super fill and all that kind of stuff so we can get this thing you know ready for covering because I'm anxious to get the covering started but uh, before we get started if you like this type of content please consider subscribing to my channel hit that notification bell so that you can be notified of future episodes of this build series and please like and share my videos it just might help the new guy get his plane finished so without further ado let's get started Okay, to start off, I went and put a small platform here in the back of the, uh, behind the cockpit, just under the turtleneck. And the reason I did that is I'm going to need some weight in the back so I can put my battery. So that's, this is a line Velcro. And I made the platform, I sealed it with some uh, thin uh, epoxy resin sanded it smooth, put another coat of thin epoxy resin down, cleaned it with alcohol after it cured, and put this Velcro down. And there is nothing getting that Velcro off. And that way I can put my battery back here against this former. And you push that down on there like that. That battery is not going anywhere. I mean, you can see it requires a lot of effort. Hopefully it's not on there permanently. I can't get them off. Man, that stuff is some good stuff. Oh. Whew. I got her. But that's where I'm gonna that's how I'm gonna mount my battery. I put the soft stuff on the back side of the battery or the bottom I guess I should say same thing I cleaned it with alcohol and stuck that velcro on there there is nothing getting this velcro off I mean you could probably heat it with a blowtorch and, and burn it off but uh, that's on there but that's how I'm going to mount my receiver up under here up under the cockpit and all that stuff and that, that's one of the things I wanted to show you next thing I'll have to reposition the plane to show you Next thing I want to show you is I redid my push rod. And the reason I redid it is I had just this little piece of balsa stick here and all wire. And it was really flimsy. You could push on that and flex it, and, and the elevators would do all kinds of weird stuff. You could push down on it. But I, I put this, I just made a longer stick all, almost all the way to the horn the servo horn and instead of uh you know cutting this off and let it go an inch and then angle i put that stick all the way to the first bend to stiffen it up a little bit now it still flexes a little bit but nothing like it did before so i'm a lot happier with that and i went ahead and over here i put some velcro down here so i can mount my receiver so I can move that this don't weigh nothing so really I could put this anywhere it's the battery that's going to basically determine my CG now it may come to a point where the, the battery back being back here is is just uh, too far back because I still have to cover this thing which covering is going to put weight in the back so I might have to put a platform like this up here and I'll just move my battery this way Either way, because the battery is going to be what's de what determines the uh, the CG fore and aft. Now, as far as laterally, uh, I just did a preliminary check. I still don't have my servos in the wings and stuff, but uh, I'm going to require one ounce in the uh, opposite wing tip of the engine head, all the way to the tip. So, uh, and it balances perfectly. 
I'll, I'll demonstrate that when we get further on down the uh, finishing stage. But anyway, let's get started uh, getting things done. What I think I might do is start sanding the corners off, rounding, radiusing them, whatever you want to call it. Get everything flat to where I'm ready to put some filler in. And because I'm done as far as the uh, fuselage goes with the radio. Oh, I do want to. I got this Great Plains switch charge mount deal. I might mount that as well. Probably put it, you know, in here. Because that's the only only place I really have to that has a spot. So uh, we'll get started with that. I'm happy with the way it's turning out now. I was concerned about that push rod. And that's one thing I wanted to fix. But that's all fixed. So let's get uh, started tearing this thing down and uh, get the super filling and doing all the uh, filling and sanding. We'll get all that done. Okay, as you can see here, I started cutting out for the muffler, which I forgot to, to do previously, and I want to get that done before I start super filling the uh, cow. So now that I got the initial circle cut, I'm going to dismount the cow, mount the engine up, and put the cow on, and slowly make an opening that will not only look neat, but it'll allow me to still get the cowl off. That's one of the main things. We gotta gotta be able to get the cowl off. So let's uh, continue with this process in fast speed. see down in there there is no getting this cow on with that muffler on there so I'm gonna have to reposition the muffler uh, in some way to either get the cow on or use a flex style muffler uh, header Let's see if I got something like that. Okay, so since there was no way that I'm gonna get that cowl on with this muffler on, even if it's up against the firewall like that, it's too tight. So what I'm gonna do, I got this fancy permagrit half round uh, deal. I'm just going to run it along the muffler, just like that, to get enough of a divot to where I can place it in there 
closer to the fuselage. And I'll just if I if I go through on the other side, I'll just have to build up a little little uh, box or whatever in there. But that's what I'm going to be doing in fast speed, in case you're wondering. So let's get this thing. I got to get this cowl with the muffler on there, and I can always put an exhaust diverter somewhere. But my hole in my cowl is going to be off, so I'm gonna have, I'm gonna patch that. Okay. Okay, as you can see, the cowl is bolted up. It's lined up. I'll double check the back plate just to make sure. That's what I like about these spinners with the flat back plate. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. All right, so. The muffler has good airspace around it. Now, what I want to do is kind of take another circle and move it up. So at, at least a, an oval big enough to where I can take a like an exhaust diverter out the bottom or something. I might I might do like I did on my eaglet and make a uh, little uh, exhaust tip that kind of angles out with some copper tubing just soldered onto the onto the engine. So let me find my green tablet. Okay, so gonna make it the same size which is one and a quarter inch. So let's get the old pen out. Kind of eyeball it up at an angle. Probably want to do it right about there. pretty good and then we'll just take it extend them lines up like that so we'll go back in fast speed I'll cut that out and we'll see if we need to cut any more way better than my first ultimate exhaust hole I had a big gaping hole it was way off so I got a decent look nice neat and I don't know if I'm even bother with a exhaust diverter just I don't know would exhaust melt that or would it just put oil all over the place I don't, know. I don't care if it's got oil on it so I don't know. You have to let me know what you think. You can always adjust it later. Well, here's a view you don't get too much. So what I'm doing here is I'm neatening up my servo wires. I'm trying to anyway.
I'm going to mount my receiver right there. And these two wires here on my ailerons. Just gonna stick them right there for now. But I'm going to zip tie or attempt to zip tie. these uh, extra ser servo cables so at least they're you know semi neat when I zip tie them I'm going to tuck them down in trick's going to be uh, getting a zip tie around them so I'm going to use these little tiny white zip ties You want to be careful you don't nick any of your servo wires. Alright, so that's that. And we'll just kind of tuck that out, out of the way. So now these two wires are just going to hang out up here for when I go to hook my ailerons to my wing. Or my wing to my fuselage. So this one here really can't do nothing with. So it's pretty stretched. I couldn't put even just a tiny little bend in it. I think it's I think it'll be all right. This is the switch. I'm gonna leave that where it is. Now here's my antenna. What I'm thinking about doing here is velcroing it down here in fact i'm gonna do it now when i uh use this velcro stuff i like to save it because it can be used to hold down stuff Okay, so before I use this Velcro to attach this, so I'm going to have one going like this. The only thing you got to worry about is don't cover up that uh, the, the lead here. So I'm going to clean a little spot off here. Figure out where I'm going to do this other one. I think I'm because they got to be 90 degrees, so. I'm going to do this one. Like. Like that, basically. So they'll be 90 degrees to one another. So 
So a clean spot off right there too. Be nice to get this radio situation taken care of. So I'm ready to use this stuff. This stuff is really sticky. And I think I want to clean my fingers, keep any oils off of that. There's no way, once this is down, it's going to move. There is no way. So I like to Velcro or stick down the uh, antennas right there where that black is. There's no way that's going anywhere. <clears throat> All right, so that's good. Now, we'll take this one and put it down here, right there. I might be in your way, but I'll show it to you when I'm done. Antennas down. All right. So now, next, I'm gonna all that situated. My servo wires are zip tied. I think I'm gonna hook the battery up to make sure I'm not getting any feedback. So the battery will nestle neatly behind here, if that's where it's needed. I just want to make sure I'm not getting any feedback, so it's not, it doesn't matter if it's rubbing anything right now. Those are fast. Okay. No feedback. So that's where that's going. That's where it's staying. Since we're doing the radio, let's mount the switch. After we get the switch mounted and everything's neatly tucked away, except for these two wires, we will... Uh, do the radio in the lost phone wing we'll get the servos in there okay i could use this and then just what you do is use the mount under here and this screws down onto the switch and you just use this as your switch. And then you have a charge jack there. 
In fact, I might go ahead and use that. Oh, I didn't want to because I'd have to. Uh, I guess I can make a template because I don't have the original template that came with the instructions, but I could just mount the switch in. But this will give me a, a charge adapter where I don't have to fish this wire out. So I might just go ahead and do that. These are made by Great Plains. Probably you can't even get them anymore. That's the way it usually goes. Which sucks because, you know, people like this kind of stuff. I guess they thought the hobby was dying. Quit making it. Okay, I need an opening that is one quarter inch by one and a quarter. So let's angle this a little bit if we can. I can do a better view anyway. I'm going to get the clear ruler because it uh, makes it easy to do these kind of things. So I can make it level with the bottom or level with the thrust line. So I think I'm going to make it level with the thrust line. And I'm going to put it as close to up this way as possible because of, you know, exhaust oil. I don't want it getting in my switch. So I'm, I'm going to make it up there here somewhere. Like an eighth of an inch from there. Needs to be a quarter inch. I think I want to make it as close to that former as possible, too. There's my rectangle. That's got to come out. All right, with a sharp knife, we're going to try to cut this out nice and neat. ruler with the tape on it keeps the uh, I'm extending those lines so I don't go past them but this ruler with the tape on it keeps it from drifting
Okay. We will test it. Oh, man. Like the proverbial glove. All right, let's mount that switch first. Been a while since I put one of these together. Plus, I don't have the instructions. This came out of my extra 300 that I obliterated. Okay, so out's going to be off, in's going to be on. So I did have that right. Okay, I need to put that charge jack in there before I... Oh, I guess it don't matter. Just make sure it's pushed all the way in, I guess. So I want to make sure it's going to work, so... Gonna Try to hook it up. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Okay, so off is out, on. Okay, so now we're going to put this together. I'm going to have to take all this back apart when I go to uh, uh, you know, cover and stuff. So I want to make sure I want to make sure that I have it all situated right. Now what I want to do is get these things all nice and zip tied out of the way of the rudder cable. You're never going to see this, you know, when you're out of the field and stuff. You're only going to see, you won't even know it's there, actually, because all you're going to see is up in there. So, that should be good enough. I want to leave a little slack here where the battery hooks up so that I can easily reach in there. Matter of fact, let me see if I can get my hands in there. So I have to remove the battery later. How am I going to do that? Oh, I have this access. Yeah, I can get in there. I forgot about my hats that I made. <laughs> All right, so that's the switch. Let's cut those bungee cords. Bungee cords. Cable ties. Careful you don't 
at your servo wire. Okay, I think I might uh, I might just put that servo wire down with some Velcro like I did before. Just so it's not flopping around. That alcohol is just cleaning up any oils or whatever. That stuff is sticky. Okay, so the only wires I have flopping is the battery cable wire and these two aileron linkages. Everything's down, secure, battery secure back here. Then we're gonna have to tighten these up unless the oh there they are. Nothing's interfering with anything. Those are out of the way. The battery cable's out of the way. Now I'm gonna show you what I use to secure my receiver connections. I use this Tulip Slick Dimensional Fabric Paint. Used for making, uh, you know, paint and t-shirts. Great stuff. Hardens and, you, and the Connections won't come loose until you make them come loose. Try to do this without messing up everything. Just run a bead where you need the connection secured. Just like that. Now that will harden. Pour more on that. That will harden. I can also put one on the, uh, I might do that just for, because you know you always hear people's battery connections coming loose. But that, even that little dot, dollop there is enough to keep it. So that'll solidify that. The battery connections, good. So, uh, and I'll do the same thing when I hook do my ailerons. So what do you say we break out the wing and get the radio installed in it? We'll uh, we'll finish this radio stuff so we can get on to finishing. Okay, so I went ahead and fashioned me a light ply, basically a rail or a plate, that I can take my battery anywhere along this area. To get my CG, and the and the uh, battery cable will reach the whole way. So I'm going to flip the plane over and put some thin thinned out resin on the on the bot or on the top of it. And while I got the thinned out resin, I'm also going to put it around this the rear cabane here because I don't I don't want to put uh, super fill on raw balsa. I want to have something hardened for it to go on to so I'm going to do that I'll do might as well do the bottom of this uh, plate while I'm here <clears throat> so we'll thin thin uh, resin the bottom and those two areas of the cabane area we'll get that done and I'm going to set this aside till that cures then I got to sand it alcohol it and put some uh, velcro strips Along the, along the length of that. Should really wait until uh, I do my balancing before I put Velcro on there because I just add more weight. But uh, I don't know. 
how much does two of those things weigh? Let's see. Let's see how much one of these weighs. I'll weigh it in grams. Seven gram or six grams with the paper on it. So if you're gonna take the paper out, it'll probably be five grams. So that ain't much. I'll just put one here and one there along the edge. That'll be enough to hold that battery. But uh, this this uh, Velcro is made by Alliant Helicopters. They uh, it's really good stuff. Highly recommend. It. So I'm gonna mix up some thinned out resin and we'll get to painting in fast speed. Okay, the uh, ceiling is done. I'm going to put my hatch on and then we're going to set this aside and break out the wing and get that all finished RFC wise. We're going to put the servo and extensions in and I'm going to have to tape some string to uh, the extensions to get it out of that hole. And uh, after uh, after I uh, get some of the sanding done on it, I have to put that fiberglass tape on it, which I had to order. Find some on eBay, which, man, that stuff spendy. And I only found one with some three quarter inch uh, fiberglass reinforcement tape. And man, that stuff must be made of gold or something. Anyway. We'll set that aside and I'll break out the wing. Okay, so before I can do this, I need to, first of all, I'm not familiar with the color code of the wire of the MKS servo, so I need to figure out what's what. So left, I'm putting on C5. Right on channel one, C1. So let's turn her on. Okay, so that needs to be reversed on the servo. Okay, that's be that. So now what I'm going to do, since I've determined, let's see, I need to put new horns on these because I over drilled them. So I ordered a pack of a bunch of them so I can hopefully get the right one, you know, that'll do exactly 90 degrees. So what I just what I wanted to do is put the uh, wait a minute that's right I'm going to put the clevis on the servo and Z bend on the control horn itself. So when I go to make adjustments, I'll make it at the servo itself. And we'll figure that out uh, when I go put them on. So these are zeroed. Okay, I have a preliminary setup to determine 
if I need to make adjustments to my slot here. So I'm going to feed this in and get it positioned. And I'm going to roughly hold the wire where this uh, servo horn is going to, or the control horn is going to be. And I'm going to give it a, a go. As you can see, it's pushing on that plate. So I'm going to have to make this end longer. So I will mark that with a pen. I'm going to bring it down another probably a quarter of an inch. And it's catching on this side, so I'm going to make it just a hair wider. So we will take it all back apart. Well, actually, I'm not going to take it apart. I'm just going to take this over here and uh, make a new piece. So that was originally a quarter inch, I believe. So I'm going to make it 5 sixteenths. Let's see, what do I think that is? 19 sixty-fourths. And I'll do the same thing to the other one, too. So let's put a new blade in the old X-Acto. Okay, let's get it straight in. as neat as I can make it look neat though. So I'll neaten it up once I get it where I need it to be. Alright, let's test it, see if it has some good movement. might make it a little bit longer. Just a little. What did I say that was? 1964? And I'm going to duplicate this on the other one. Providing it uh, has the same amount of play. I'm not going to cut this. I'm just going to sand it to the line.
what I'm going to do is this is just temporarily on here. I can already tell I'm going to need longer screws. They have longer screws in here. Because they're not even going all the way through. Okay, but that'll be good enough for what I need to do here. So I'm going to bend a Z-bend. And you put that pin where you want Z-bend. I'm trying to do this without busting my wing and denting up my balsa. Right there. Should be. Yeah, you know, not close enough, but it'll work. What I'm trying to do is get an idea of how much throw these uh, ailerons need. This is the trial and error stuff you got to go through when you build airplanes. That's perfect right there, I believe. Good enough. what the throw is on that it's supposed to be not sure, even sure how these things work <laughs> yeah way more throw than I need but that's what I need right there that's almost full deflection okay I'm going to consider that mocked up. I'm going to move over to the other side. Do that. Okay. I am good to glue this cover on. Okay. Didn't show any of that. So, anyway, what I did... Basically, I installed the servo, made this hole bigger, and now I got full range of motion. With no binding. That is the, uh, let me go ahead and put a bead of glue around this tab because there's no, nothing supporting it. And that'll be 
the right side done. Need to find them longer screws. Okay, because I'm a dummy and didn't show you all the details on that side, I'll show you all the details on this side. So, okay, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and install the uh, push rod. Trying not to destroy my wing in the process. Push rod installed. All right, now let's put this servo in. It's going to really be cool when I mock it up now because the, the whole uh, whole airplane is going to work. Install screws for the servo. I really like these servos that I got for this thing. It's they're really slim. If I'd have known that you can get something like this, I would have done the kit wings like this too. Now we're gonna do the same old thing I did over there. I'm gonna hook this up, put the plate on, and basically it's gonna to have to be a customized fit because you know it ain't gonna fit right. And I need to install that as well. Most going over here to match. Gotta look the same. Those MKS servos, they're noisy. That's installed now. The Z bend.
Then I can untape this thing. Well, that one's almost perfect. I need to screw it in a little. Looks to me like it's going to need the same amount of uh, adjustment. Perfect. All right, we'll turn her on, see what she does. Slowly. Yeah. Market. Same old deal. Nineteen sixty fourth. Makes me want to make a whole new piece. Give this one a shot. It's better when you remember to change the camera angles. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah. good with that. So now we will glue that on. Still got to glue them that center sheeting on too. Making sure I don't forget anything.
Then I'm going to run a bead for this thing on that connector, and it won't go anywhere. Okay, the only thing left to do is glue this panel in here. Hopefully, I can get it in there nice without any issues. And then I'll tape these together with a string, tuck them down inside there when I go to cover. I remember I put that extra washer on the back here. So let's get to gluing. Get this baby done so we can mock it up. Feels good. Alright, that is, for all intents and purposes, a built bottom wing with all kinds of gashes. So, I am going to, let's put, the, let's put it together so we can get the, uh, the rods between the upper and lower ailerons made. Okay, I know covering is going to add some weight. I'm also going to have some paint up front, forward of the CG, so that'll take up some. I have one ounce of uh, lead on the bottom wing tip, and my battery's back in the back compartment there. Now, the, the uh, CG is just past the halfway point of the cabanes to the rear. So as it sits right now, It's pretty dang balanced. Now you see I'm slightly nose heavy. So that's going to be okay. Now, 
I'm happy with that. I may need to add another quarter ounce of lead because of that muffler. I forgot about that. So let's see if I can do it. There we go. So this is another quarter ounce. All right, so that's basically it. The only thing I'm missing <coughs> is my uh, rods and clevises and horns for to connect the lower ailerons to the upper ailerons. Okay, to give you a preview of all the control services working except for the top ailerons, I'm going to go ahead and show you. Here's the aileron throws. Elevator. Rudder. And then throttle. And my lead's dropping. <laughs> anyway, that's about it. I'm going to go ahead and put these rods in. And we'll see what she looks like after that. Okay, she's completely mocked up. Battery, muffler, uh, all the ailerons working. So here we go. I think the battery's going dead. <laughs> yeah, I've been messing around with it. So anyway, there we go. We have her. All mocked up. Well, I'm going to call that an episode. We accomplished a heck of a lot in this episode. Got all the radio gear in, function tested, and pretty much balances out really good. All I need is an ounce and a quarter of weight in the tip of the left lower wing, and it bounce, balances perfectly laterally. Uh, but we did quite a bit. We we're, were one more episode closer to finishing this thing. Next episode, we will build those uh, landing gear skirts and start filling, sanding, super filling, getting all that stuff done. I got some paint to do, but some of it has to be done after the covering. But uh, man, this thing is looking good, <laughs> looking cool, man. Uh, just like I remembered it. But uh, we, will, we will continue this on the next episode. So if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. Hit that notification bell so that you can be notified of future episodes of this build series. And be sure and like and share my videos. It just might help some, uh, somebody new or somebody else that's having a difficult time finishing their biplane to get it finished. So uh, until next episode, thanks for watching.